You're listening to Food Tech Talk, supply chain insights from farm to fork, a podcast discussing the latest trends and technology in the food and supplement industries, featuring conversations with regulatory experts, quality and safety champions, and thought leaders across the industry. I'm your host, Lydia Adams. Let's jump right in. Welcome to another episode of Food Tech Talk, Supply Chain Insights from Farm to Fork. Today, we're excited to welcome Stephen Foster, a seasoned expert in food safety and quality assurance with extensive experience across the food industry. Stephen is currently the VP of Food Safety and Quality at Wholesale Produce Supply, where he leads initiatives to ensure the highest standards of food safety and sustainability. With a background that includes roles at Post Holdings and South Mill Champs, Stephen has a deep understanding of food safety regulations, preventative controls, and the implementation of cultural change within organizations. His expertise is driving performance improvement in managing complex supply chains, and that makes him a key figure in the industry. Welcome to the show, Stephen. Thank you for having me. We're excited to dig in here. So to start us off, why don't you share a little bit about what drew you into the food safety and assurance field? So I've been in the food industry for many years. My journey began with curiosity about safe food production and distribution within the supply chain, uh, which we evolved into a lifelong mission to protect and nourish lives. And throughout your career, you've held several key leadership roles. Is there really a defining moment, project, or role that you had that really significantly shaped your approach to food safety and quality? I believe the focus of being able to provide safe food for the ultimate consumer, for for family, for friends, for your neighbors, for people you may attend associations or church with. I think that's such an important part of this industry is that we're all in this mission to make food safer, right? So in that vein, a lot of times food safety is viewed as more of a set of regulations. How have you seen this go from regulation to more of a process and a culture within an organization? Yeah, it's it's very important. So the regulatory part of it is going to put a framework in place that industry really needs to adhere to and aspire to. But it needs to be embraced within the culture of an organization, really from the top down, all levels, where everyone feels empowered to call out something if it's not right, but to really be more empowered to follow what is right and to focus on those practices, whether it be hand washing or proper use of PPE to protect the food that they're handling to ensure that it's processed and handled in a way that's going to be ultimately safe for anyone to consume and to have confidence in consuming. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And then thinking through that is how does continuous improvement play a role in maintaining these types of standards? If we talk about continuous improvement, it could be enhanced traceability methods, as we're seeing with some of the new regulatory, like with FISMA 204, which is really about traceability from end to end. And so with regards to continuous improvement, just imagine going into a store and buying something like an apple, and being able to trace that back almost to the tree that it was growing on, and then going forward throughout the cycle all the way to the, where the consumer is buying it at the retail outlet. And I'm glad you mentioned traceability. We're starting to see a lot of consumers that are really demanding that level of traceability. They want to know where their food is coming from, and they want to feel protected and they want to feel that affinity with the brand. So talk to me about how those rigorous food safety standards can really help to impact consumer trust and brand loyalty and then how that really affects the business overall. It really starts exactly with increased transparency in today's marketplace. Consumers want to know, they actually, I think a lot of consumers, they want to know that their food is produced safe. But do they really think about it when they're going to buy something? Are you going grocery shopping? Are you going to a restaurant? Are you really focused on, has this food been produced safely? I think they're probably not. They're putting a trust in the suppliers and the processors and distributors to ensure that this food is handled in a manner that's going to provide nutrition to them or their families and also be ultimately very safe so that there's no repercussions from it. And they can enjoy the quality of that food as they consume it. 
In terms of customer confidence, I think it can be so easily broken with just one withdrawal, one recall. In your experience, have you seen how you can prevent those types of things to maintain the customer loyalty and an incident that challenged that? And how can companies grapple with that brand loyalty need and the the need for consumer trust? If we hear of things like recalls and it's scary in today's place with increased technology, we're able to quickly trace and determine the source of potential outbreak or a micro level or illnesses may be occurring from a product source. To be able to control those events really goes back to the culture of an organization and how well they're producing that food and how they have food to ensure safety. And that everyone feels empowered that if something is not being done right, that they're able to speak up and they're embraced for speaking up to whatever dysfunction might be taking place, whether it's water or hand washing or hygiene practices in organization. We seem to regurgitate some of these practices, but they're fundamentally so important. And what I'm seeing now is a renewed focus on good handling practices, which is hygiene or good hygiene practices, right? Good ag practices and It all fundamentally goes back to culture. I love that word that you used, empowering. Seems that empowering every member of the organization to have this eye to food safety. How has that played out in some of your experiences in your career? Like, do you feel that having multiple departments engage with that culture has made a difference in the overall impact for food safety for the organization? Yes. I mean, I feel like it it goes all the way through an organization, right? And it's from either the top down or from the bottom up. They're all equally important roles in ensuring that the food is handled safely. But every intercession that takes place with the handling of that food is a potential opportunity for something to happen to that product. And to ensure that it's handled safely, everyone needs to take an equal role in proper handling of that product, whether it's temperature controls or hygiene or sanitary transportation. It flows all the way through the supply chain. Absolutely agree. And moving topics over to technology, there's been a lot of changes and I'm sure technology within your career. So maybe talk me through how you feel that can really transform food safety, how that plays into these, not just compliance for regulations, but then also maintaining that food safety culture. I believe one of the key propellants of technology is really the ability to quickly trace product In our case, a few keystrokes, and we know exactly where it comes from, and we can trace it quickly back, reaching out to the shipper to find out actually the harvest dates or the fields they were growing from. And then going forward, again, it's just a couple of keys, and we know exactly where all the product went. So I think that's really an involvement in technology. It wasn't all that long ago when people were sitting down and going through paper to determine how this product was either repacked into something else and where it come from, where it went quite a bit more time consuming than it is in today's world. And I think it's gotten to that level where it's really necessary when we talk about the old ways of doing things and moving on to technology. Have you found that it's it's an imperative to have like a technology system to align with that? Or how can companies really get up to speed with that? That's actually part of the new traceability or labeling law with barcoding with, I think it's FISMA 204 is what it's called, which requires that the product is traceable all the way through maintaining its original information. And so the original information coming from, if it's a fresh produce item, where it was grown from or where it was, whatever type of product that might be, where it originated from, and each intercession or everyone that handled is traceable all the way through the supply chain. They're able to do it very quickly. Which is really important going back to our thoughts on consumer trust and stuff like that. It's certainly (laughs) time-wise an imperative that these things are, if it is, even if it is a withdrawal or what have you, that is quickly taken care of rather than taking days to figure out what's going on, right? (laughs) Absolutely. It's faster the the expediency of being able to identify the, the source and being able to corral it, so to speak potentially save many people from becoming ill if there's something wrong with the product, right? For sure. Talking about, I know that you're also an expert in sustainability. So how does food safety and sustainability really intersect in our industry today? Why do you feel like that's a good thing and a crucial part of the process? Oh my goodness, yes. It's just one of my passions, really. It's because of 
if we look at the migratory populations across the planet and we're looking at the decrease in resources and an increase in consumption, it's absolutely imperative that we're focused in creating a harmony between the two of producing food, but also being good stewards of the environment. And recycling efforts are really key, trying to upcycle products if we're able to, having not something go to waste, but potentially putting what we thought may have been a waste product back into the supply chain in a good capacity that might create nutrition either for animals or people or a pharmaceutical item. But if we look at like, there's been more and more studies and focus on like microplastics, right? And there's plastics are used in growing fields. They're used throughout the bottling industry. They're virtually everywhere. And a recent trip that I had taken down to beautiful Costa Rica, and I was walking along a beach after a storm that recently pushed a lot of debris up onto the beach. A lot of, like you would just packed wood, bamboo, things like that. I was walking along this pristine beach and here's bottles one after another. And ultimately, somehow that's going to get back into the environment. There's arguments on both sides of the fence, so to speak. But one must think somehow that's going to end up back into the soils or into the waters and get into the food supply. Um, if we look at like sustainability as well, it's like fertilizers or pesticides. And there's been countless lawsuits with certain suppliers of chemicals. How is that getting back into the food supply where people are going to consume it and digest that? What are the implications of that? And so really, it's, we need to produce more and more food to feed the growing population, but we also need to be very careful how we're producing that food and look at all the potential elements that could affect the safety of the food and the populace that's consuming the food. And I feel like it's the same thing of culture, right? So how have you been able to build sustainability and caring for the environment and connecting that to our food into the teams that you've managed and the organizations that you've led? I'm glad you asked that question because I'm very passionate about it too. I enjoy very much sharing what I know through years and gaining knowledge also from other people and other cultures as well. But I've been fortunate to build very engaged teams, very talented teams that are very focused on doing the right. That I think is first and foremost. So we might have regulatory practices put into place that we need to adhere to, but ultimately it comes down to what we're doing and if we're doing the right thing to ensure that the food's produced safely. I feel like a broken record because I say this all the time, but I think when we talk about the brand and the consumer, sustainability is also important to them. They want to see on their label, hey, this is sourced sustainably. This is environmentally friendly. Have you seen that trend in your work as well with the sustainability and the consumer? I absolutely. And more and more of our customers are requiring because it's consumer driven that is sourced sustainably, is sourced ethically. People who are working from the harvesters or the planters, that they're being treated fairly and it's flowing all the way through the supply chain, where it's becoming more and more prevalent to see social responsibility and business ethic audits. And that's ironically, it's being driven through food safety because it's all interconnected, right? I agree with that for sure. And you talked about the supply chain. So I feel like the supply chain is just getting more and more complex and diverse. And what are some of the biggest challenges that you've faced with maintaining that food safety standard throughout the supply chain as it grows in complexity? I believe the complexity is because it's becoming a, a marketplace and everything is more global and is resourced more quickly. And you have different regulatory environments across the planet. But many of them are starting to adopt the same type of regulations as we've seen initially from Europe, the European standards, and then FISMA in 2011, and the Canadian Safe Food for Canadians Act in 2012, which are all very replicative or very similar in scope. So I think that helps to ensure that there's consistency across sources. But I think part of it is just ensuring that where it's being sourced from are in compliance with the requirements that meet the regulatory environment here. And if we're shipping like from here to Canada, we need to make sure that the products we're shipping, we might be sourcing them from Mexico or Central or South America that have different standards, but we need to ensure that what we're acquiring is safe for Canada or safe for the U.S. or the localities that we're shipping this product to. And I think that's probably one of the challenges to ensure that we're in compliance all the way across. But it goes back to being having more consistency in the regulatory environment as well. You make a great point about specifically like international suppliers and like having your own standards. 
have you experienced that having your own in-house standards that kind of layer on top of the regulatory? Like, has that helped you to be able to manage suppliers that are international? Absolutely. And so we try to have as much consistency built into our supplier approval program that would be cross-functional across the different locations. Even though like here, we're not necessarily an importer record of much of anything. So we go through brokers or shippers that are going to acquire the product for us. But nonetheless, we have them sign off on documents and collect documents that ensure they're in compliance with our program. And our program, we try to make as consistent as possible to ensure that it's in compliance with either U.S. or Canadian standards or where we may be selling our product to. In terms of the industry, how important is education and training to ensure that food safety processes are implemented? How do you take that from that regulation level and get that training program into your organizations to maintain that consistency that you mentioned? Absolutely essential to ensure that there's consistency and understanding within our organization of what is required not only regulatorily, but company policy and building that into the company policy and building it into the culture so that the people here are consistent in their practices and understanding of what we need to do to ensure that the food we produce is safe and ethical and sustainable. Are there any successful training programs or methods that you've used in the past that you can share? It's a very good question, but so we use several different sources. Initially, we would buy a hand source, and then we tried to modify it a bit more so it fits our application more. And then also then with the environment, the way it is with different populations, I think at one time we had about 12 or 13 different language groups working here. And so it's utilizing interpreters or translation, but also providing our documents so that they're in all the various languages as well so that everyone's understanding the information. And sometimes it's a bit challenging, but we do our best. I feel we do a pretty good job to ensure that the people here understand and what the expectations are and what the culture here is so that everyone's really consistent in what they're doing. It's going back to that foundation and building on it. Okay, and then looking ahead, are there any trends or changes that you see in the field of food safety? Is there anything that's making you feel excited about it? And can you share that with us? One of the trends I feel is food being perceived as a medicine or for a health benefit besides or aside from its basic nutrient value. And people are more and more starting to look at foods as how it can benefit them in other ways. and What foods or natural sources that they can use and consume to treat a potential ailment that they may have or to prevent one versus a, a pharmaceutical approach. Food as medicine. Yes, I've heard that a lot lately. I agree with you. How can companies really be able to ride that wave and understand that trend and really be able to make sure that their food is matching that perception of food as medicine? I think we're going to see that not just in the fresh produce industry, but also within other industries that provide food and creating other foods, perhaps take one product and create another product that may facilitate part of that health benefit. On basic, I look at like what berries or, or other fruits or vegetables provide for a health benefit. So I try to be as organic as possible in my personal approach, and I'm not advocating that for anyone else, but I think the more simplistic something is, it's probably the health here IP. And that really goes hand in hand, I think, with health and safety, right? <laughs> you want the food to be safe and you want it to be healthy. So I think that's an important point. Absolutely. Looking back on your career, which has been extensive in your experience, if you could implement one groundbreaking change in global food safety standards, what would that be? I think what I believe would be a greater focus on culture and everyone feeling really empowered and participatory in ensuring that what they're handling is going to make a difference in someone's life for positive or negative. And we would hope that they're all focused on this being a more positive experience for everybody involved. And go back a little bit to the training and something I always felt very passionate about in relaying to people and I'm trying to train them in food safety. And T7 is the product that in the food you're handling is something that either your children or your family or your neighbors are going to consume. And you want to ensure that you're doing everything you can that is safe and it's nutrition and it's a quality experience for them. So a couple of closing questions I have for you. For people getting into this field, for those that are graduating and then trying to become a food safety expert like yourself, what advice would you give this next generation of professionals? 
transparency and a willingness to share their information with one another, to learn from one another. And it's a competitive environment in business. But one thing that's really great about this profession is it's like medicine. And we're really trying to help people to ensure that everything they produce in their handling methods are safe and we're producing a safe quality product for people. Great advice. And then lastly, if there was anyone in this industry that you could take to lunch, have a beer with, take to dinner, who would that be? I don't know who that might be. I've learned from so many people. And again, I've learned it's a constant learning. We're constantly learning from other people and other people's viewpoints. And that's what's tremendously exciting about this industry. No one person knows everything. We all gain knowledge from other people and other sources. And I've been fortunate enough, as I think other people are as well, to learn from many people in the industry or academics. I've been a research reviewer for the Center for Produce Safety for a number of years. And I've met a lot of great researchers and read their information and have the fortunate ability to review their research. But it's also how that research is implemented at the business end of it that makes so much of a difference. I love that answer. And we're really grateful that we got to learn from you, Stephen. Is there anything else you want to add to the conversation before we end this interview? I want to thank you for the opportunity to have you on your show. I'm just, I'm really passionate about food and ensuring that food is safe and it's a quality experience for people to consume. Yes, I definitely felt that. I appreciate all of your time and your answers. And thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for joining us for another bite-sized nugget of food tech talk, supply chain insights from farm to fork. To learn more about Trustwell and its technology platform that connects product formulation, nutrition analysis, and compliant labeling with traceability, recall readiness, and supply chain transparency, please visit www.trustwell.com. Thanks for listening.